Hello, my name is Maria and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a tubular herringbone bracelet that I'm calling the Mixed Metals Bracelet simply because of the colors of the beads that I use. This pattern was actually inspired by a photo that one of you lovely subscribers sent to me. Um, so I hope that you enjoy it. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up. And let's get started. To get started with our bracelet project here, I have some size 11 seed beads, some 4mm round pearls, and you can use any 4mm round beads you like, and I also have some 3mm round pearls here, again you can use any 3mm round beads you like. I also have a size 10 beading needle with some wildfire is what I'm using and I just happen to have um, this on hand it's the 10 pounds 125 yards um, welfare and you can use um, fire line whatever you have on hand will be fine for this project we are gonna start this bracelet by completing a row of ladder stitch with four beads. So if you're not familiar with ladder stitch, let me just take you through quickly how to do it. So I'm going to pick up two size 11 seed beads first, and I'm gonna slide them down. You're going to need about a 10 inch tail to add your clasp at the end. i just get the other beads out of the way. From here, I'm going to go through the first bead I added from the tail end and pull that and that's going to cause my beads to sit side by side and that's exactly what you want and as you go this is going to look a little wonky but don't worry about it it will straighten out and everything will come together as we progress so I'm going to follow that by going down through that second bead towards the tail and I'm going to pick up another seed bead and I'm going to go down through that second um, bead again towards the tail one more time and pull and again that's going to make that be that third bead sit side by side there I'm going to continue up through that last bead that I added and I'm going to repeat that one more time by picking up another seed bead and going up through from the tail end this time going up through that last bead okay oops and then I'm going to finish off this by going down through that last seed bead now I want to turn these beads into a circle so I'm coming out of my last seed bead and I'm going to pass up through the very first one from the tail end. Just like that. And I'm going to leave my thread loose just so you can see what I'm doing a little better. But as you go, you can pull yours tight. Um, then I'm going to continue down through the very last seed bead just like that and then I'm going to go up through the first seed bead from the tail end one more time so you can see that I've just created a loop of thread around the beads and when I pull all of that together it's going to pull my beads into a circle kind of like that okay so now I'm going to get into the herringbone portion of the tutorial I'm doing tubular herringbone so I'm going to pick up two of my um, seed beads and I'm going to pass through one of the beads next to where my working thread is coming out of now you can either choose to go left or you can choose to go right but once you have picked a direction stick to it as you progress don't change your mind and 
you know, go the opposite way halfway through. So I am going to go to the right because that is more comfortable for me. And I'm going to try to keep my fingers out of the way as much as possible. It's a little difficult because I don't have much to hold on to, but just bear with me. So I'm going to the right, so I'm just going to pass down through. So I'm going towards the tail end. The very next seed bead on the right hand side of where my working thread is coming out of. So I already have my two seed beads on my thread. And I'm going to pull those down and you can see they instantly went into that V shape that is very characteristic of herringbone stitch. So I'm going to continue by going up through the next seed bead to the right just to get into position to add more beads. I'm going to pick up two more of my seed beads and I'm going to go down through that very next seed bead to the right of where my working thread is coming out of. And this is what you have so far. Okay. So now I need to get into position to add more beads, but as you can see, there is nowhere left to add any more. So at this point, you need to step up. So I am going to, I'm trying to get a grip on the beads here. I'm going to go up through the next two seed beads to the right of where my working thread is coming out of. Okay, so you can see my working thread here, and I'm just going up through the two seed beads um, next to where that thread is exiting. I'm going to pull that up. And now I am in position to add to my beadwork because you want to be adding along the top edge of your, your beads. So I've picked up two more of my seed beads and I'm going to repeat that whole process. And this time I have two rows of beads. So I'm just going to be going through the very top seed bead um, to the right of where my thread is. I'm not going to be going through all of the rows. We're only working with the very top one. So I'm just going to go up through the top right to get into position to add two more of my seed beads. So again, I'm going to turn there and I'm going to go down through the top right seed bead just like that and sometimes you need to kind of wrangle your beads into place you don't always want to sit where they should or the way they should and again I have nowhere left to add any more beads so I'm going to step up by passing through the top two seed beads to my right and I'm going to pull and this is what you're gonna have so far Okay, so I'm going to repeat that one more time just so you kind of get the hang of it and then we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm going to pick up two seed beads. I'm going to go down through the top right seed bead and then up through the top one to the right of that and pull and pick up two more seed beads and go down through the top right one. And then I'm going to step up by passing through the top two to the right of where my thread is coming out of. And pull. So I want you to continue this until you have 12 rows of seed beads in total. So right now you can see that we have four so let me just show you one, oops, one, two, three, four. We have four rows of seed beads and I want you to add eight more until you have a total of 12. So I'm going to do that and when I'm finished, I'm going to come back and show you what to do next. All right, so I finished my 12 rows of seed beads here and I'm going to move on to the next step which will require my three millimeter and four millimeter pearls. So first I'm going to pick up one three millimeter pearl, one 
size 11 seed bead and one three millimeter pearl so just like that have a little pearl sandwich here or seed bead sandwich rather <laughs> um so then i'm going to slay those down and you're going to continue pretty much the same way you've been doing all along i'm going to pass down through the um top seed bead to the right of where i am coming out of so just like that and this may require a little extra you know rustling with your beads but it'll be fine and then you continue by going up through the next seed bead at the top there and we're going to repeat that you're going to pick up one three millimeter one seed bead and another three millimeter pearl and i'm saying pearl but you can really use any three and four millimeter beads you like or have around it's totally up to you and then I'm going to pass through that next seat bead there and twist them get them in place so now I'm going to step up this is where things change just a little bit I'm going to step up through that top seed bead and through the three millimeter pearl that I just added just like that and we are completely going to ignore these seed beads that we added in between the pearls we're not going to pass through those at all so the next step is to pick up one four millimeter pearl and one seed bead and another four millimeter pearl and you're going to repeat this same process I'm going to go down through what this next three millimeter pearl here and pull and then I'm going to continue up through the three millimeter pearl next one and pick up another four millimeter a seed bead and a four millimeter and I'm going to pass down through the next three millimeter just like that okay and pull tight so now we're going to step up through the three millimeter and then through the four millimeter if i can get my needle through there this is why i don't like pearls sometimes the holes are so small and tight okay there we go so now we are going to switch back to our three millimeter pearls so i'm going to pick up two three millimeter pearls here we're not going to put the um, seed bead in between because we want it to look very similar to where where we started here and we don't have that seed bead in between here we just have it at the top so i'm going to pick up just the two uh, three millimeter pearls and continue down through the four millimeter to the right from here i'm going to do something a little different I'm going to pick up a single seed bead and I'm going to pass through that next four millimeter pearl and what that does is it just fills in the space between the pearls there just a little bit and you know just hides all that space in between there and then I'm going to pick up two more three millimeter pearls and continue down through the four millimeter to the right so just like that <laughs> and once again I'm going to pick up one seed bead and I'm going to step up through the four millimeter and the three millimeter So you'll have something that looks just like this when you're done that, that step. I'm going to switch back to my seed beads. Let me bring them over here because I keep crossing over. So I'm going to pick up two seed beads now. And I'm going to pass down through the three millimeter to the right. I'm going to pick up one seed bead and fill in the space 
on the side. So just pass up through that next three millimeter pearl. Again, we're gonna pick up two seed beads and going to go through the next three millimeter to the right. Oh, fingers caught. And I'm going to fill in that last space with a single seed bead and step up through the three millimeter and the seed bead. And then I'm going to go right back into what we've been doing all along, so with our seed beads. So I'm going to pick up two seed beads, pass through the top seed bead to the right. I'm not going to add any seed beads along the sides. That was just to fill in the space between the pearls. And remember, we want it to look just like how we started here. So we're going to not, we're not going to add any seed beads out along the side right there when you're passing through the seed bead. I'm going to pick up two more seed beads and go through. And then we're going to step up by passing through the next two seed beads to the right. Just like that. And pull. And from there we're going to repeat our 12 rows of seed beads just like we did down here and when i come back i'm going to show you how to end the bracelet off because i'm just doing a little sample piece so i'll explain when i come back okay so i've finished my 12 rows of seed beads here so this is what i have so far and i'm just going to show you how to end it off i'm not going to make the whole bracelet um I do have an example here though. So this is what your bracelet should look like. And it'll also make a really nice necklace as well. It's very flexible and very delicate. I quite like this design. Um, so after you've finished your seed bead sequence here, you pretty much just repeat this over and over and alternate. So you would go straight into your pearls here just like we did before and then back into your seed beads then pearl seed beads pearl seed beads until you reach your desired length now what i do want is that you end your bracelet with a sequence of seed beads just like this so you can attach your cl clasp um, you can always make the bracelet just a little bit shorter so that you can add um sorry so you can end with a seed bead um, sequence and then you can always add a chain extender some extra jump rings just to make it the correct length and make it comfortable but I mean it's your bracelet it's totally up to you if you want to shorten the beginning if the end of it doesn't match up or something totally up to you do what works best for you so I'm just going to show you how to end this sample piece off as if it was the finished bracelet um, I have I've already stepped up so I'm in position to add more beads if I wanted so as I said before you would add your pearls here and then your seed beads and on and on but if you can't see the end of your bracelet you can see here that the last row does not connect to one another the last the two sides don't connect to one another and we need to make them do that just like the this first part is all joined together we need to zip those together as well so without adding any beads, we're going to follow our thread path and I'm just going to pass down through that top right seed bead and then up through the top one there. And you can already see that that's connecting that one side there. And then I'm going to pass down through the top right one and then up through the very last one and that completes that part of it and you can see there's no longer gap between that final row it's all held together and it's exactly what you want so from here you're going to add your clasp so i'm just going to pick up three more of my seed beads here i'm going to slide those down and i'm going to pick up my clasp and i have a jump ring attached to a lobster clasp here then that's what I'm using 
So I'm just going to slide that down a little bit and I'm going to pass through the very last seed bead that I put on here, just like that. And hold the lobster clasp and or your whatever clasp you're using and slide the beads, slide everything down. I'm going to pick up two seed beads and then I'm going to pass through the very next uh, CB top CB to the right of where my thread is coming out of and that creates this little V shape on the end and that holds your clasp in place. Now I want to reinforce the clasp so I'm going to go up through the next bead down through the following one and up through that top bead along with the beads in our clasp. So that got you right back into position to reinforce your clasp. You just follow your thread path and you'll be, you'll be fine. And from here, you're all done. You're just going to weave down through one column of your beadwork, your bracelet, and tie some half hitch knots and remove the excess thread. So I'm just gonna tie one knot here, however many you are comfortable with to secure your work. So that's what that first end of your bracelet would look like. On the other end of your bracelet, you do not have to go through the process of connecting the the very last row of seed beads because we started it off with a ladder stitch so everything is already all tied together you don't have to worry about that part so all you have to do on this end of your bracelet is repeat the process of attaching the clasp and that's it and then you tie your thread off and you're all done and ready to go so if you want the full written tutorial for this bracelet project, you can find that on the blog. I'll leave the link in the description box down below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and comment below and let me know what you thought of this video. If you have any suggestions for future projects, I'd love to hear them. Or let me know what you're struggling with so I can come up with ideas that suit your needs. Um, thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.